What's up everybody, Nate here, and well, we have another housing market update for you. So the housing market has been cooling off in the United States over the last couple of months, but now that process seems to be escalating. In July, home sales actually decreased by around 6% and are now down year over year by over 20%. We're starting to see home prices start to pull back as well in some markets all throughout the country, and home contracts are starting to get canceled faster than they pretty much ever have in American history. They hit a record high of 16% in July. Not only that, but the entire mortgage market is being affected. Wells Fargo is essentially shutting down their entire mortgage business because they are not making enough money in order to meet the amount of costs that they have, and they're not the only ones. Quicken or Rocket Mortgages is doing the exact same thing, laying off a large portion of their workforce because, well, there's just not enough money coming in. And that's not all. So we also have home builders starting to pull back and confidence in the home building market is going down faster than it ever has, meaning that people are not creating enough new homes in order to meet demand. So the big question on everybody's mind right now is that is this housing market slowdown going to turn into a crash, into a recession, and is it going to be anything like what we saw back in 2008? Well, today I want to talk about exactly what is going on in the housing market right now. I want to kind of compare it to what happened back in 2008 and I want to show you what could happen in the future of the housing market with today's conditions. So home sales in the United States have been decreasing for a while now. Over the past couple of months they've been going down but July in particular was a big month for this. It dropped 6% which was the biggest that we have ever seen in American history and now with sales down 20% year over year that shows that the housing market is in a technical recession. And there are two major reasons for that. So the first and foremost most has to do with things like inflation and our economy. Americans right now are looking at their home sale and looking at the house that they were going to buy and realizing that they might not have the funds in order to purchase it. And that's because inflation right now is raging at a rate higher than we have seen in over 40 years. Right now it's currently at 8.5%. That is really high and that means that the prices for just about everything are starting to go up. A few weeks ago we talked about the auto market and if you want to watch that video, I will link it for you in the description below, but we talked about how people are having a hard time paying for their car right now. And when inflation is really high, that is typically the first thing to go. And then other things start to trickle down until you don't have a house anymore because people are not able to afford their mortgage. Well, people are starting to think, well, if I get into a mortgage right now with these high of interest rates, well, I'm not going to be able to afford my home, so I'm not going to buy it. Not only that, but the Federal Reserve has been battling inflation trying to bring it down. Now the Federal Reserve can control demand in our economy by printing a lot of money which spikes a lot of demand and by lowering or raising their interest rates which makes demand go up or down in our economy now. Right now they're starting to raise their interest rates which means that it's a lot harder for people to get mortgages. That alone is going to mean that millions of Americans are barred from getting a mortgage. They simply can't afford it. That means demand is slowly coming down too and well that's why demand for the most part has been dropping in our economy. And the second reason has to do with that stat that I mentioned at the beginning of this video. 16% of home contracts actually fell through in July. So Americans are actually going through the entire process of getting a mortgage and they're getting close to finalizing that sale but then they're realizing that they don't want to do that anymore. And one of the big reasons for that is because they're kind of looking at the market right now and realizing that well there's a lot of supply and they'd rather get through that bidding war, which we saw a lot of in 2021. Now that they've gotten through that though, well, they're realizing that there's other options out there. They want to be on contract and there's nothing that really says that they have to finish that deal. So they go ahead and cancel it. And if something else opens up, they're going to go after that home instead. That gives a lot of buyers leeway right now. The ones that can actually afford a home are still going out and buying homes in 2022. You got to keep it to account the rest of our economy here. So businesses in the United States are not doing as well as they were in 2021. And that has a lot to do with the Federal Reserve. As the Federal Reserve is raising those interest rates, that not only hurts Americans and their ability to get mortgages or get auto loans or any other type of money, but it also hurts people looking to start a business or invest in a business because now all of that money is really hard to come by. Those interest rates are really high. So investors are not going out and getting a lot of debt in order to invest in businesses. It's just 
far too expensive and they're not going to see as big of a return as they did over the last couple of years. So that is completely cut out and a lot of Americans are worried that they might lose their job over the next coming months because businesses don't have as much money and things like inflation are making it so people are spending a lot less money. That means that sales are not as high and also businesses don't have that investor liquidity in cash so they're starting to lay people off. The big tech companies are doing this the most so far in 2022 because a lot of them are not super profitable. This means that they're going to have to cut their costs in order to make a profit and the first thing that goes is typically people. All of that is leading to a slowing down in the housing market and this is pretty designed. This is exactly what the Federal Reserve wants to do. They want to bring down demand in the housing market because they want to bring down inflation. By bringing down the housing market in terms of prices and sales, that means that inflation overall is going to come down. The Federal Reserve uses something called the Consumer Price Index and core inflation in order to see how high inflation is going and the housing market is a big chunk of that. So just bringing down the housing market alone is going to allow the Federal Reserve to lower inflation. Even though other things are probably still going to go up, but we'll cover all of that in another video. The Federal Reserve has talked about this a lot as well, but with demand coming down, that allows the supply of homes to start coming up. And this is something that has constantly been in rotation throughout American history. You're going to have moments in the housing market and pretty much any market where supply is going to be greater than demand or demand is going to be greater than supply. Over the last couple of years though, we have seen demand spike in the housing market. Supply has been really low for a bunch of different reasons. Like we had the pandemic and builders couldn't get a lot of the materials that they needed because of economic slowdowns. They couldn't build homes fast enough even though people wanted homes, there just wasn't enough homes out there. That meant that prices went up and inflation in the housing market also started to rise. In 2007 and 2008 though, it was a completely different situation, right? In that market, you had supply that was way higher than demand. People at that point didn't really want homes anymore and that's because of the entire mortgage collapse that happened during that time. Now, I want to say that the 2007-2008 market was completely different. What is happening right now is very much different than what happened in 2008. For one, you had something called ninja loans. This was no income, no job loans that essentially people could go into a bank or other financial institution and ask for a loan and they didn't have to prove their income. They didn't have to prove that they had a down payment or a job in order to repay that loan. You also had subprime mortgages going out like crazy. So people that have not so great credit, well, they were also getting mortgages and what they were doing was giving them adjustable rates. That was essentially a rate that was going to be lower at first, but as mortgage interest rates eventually go back up, they're going to have to pay a higher mortgage price. That ultimately led to foreclosures and a whole bunch of other issues for the housing market. It bled out into other parts of our economy because the banks got hit and also the housing market got hit and Wall Street got hit. So all of these different sectors were basically bleeding cash. The situation in 2022 is very different and it's been very different for a long time. Like I remember when I got my house in 2020, it was my first home and there was a stack of paperwork about, well, a mile and a half high. There were so many ways that I had to prove my income. If one single dollar was unaccounted for in my bank account, the bank wanted to know where that dollar came from. So the way that they check to make sure that people can afford mortgages is very different than what's going on now. And that's a really good thing considering inflation and other problems in our economy. Also, prices went way down because we had way bigger supply in 2008. Right now though, in 2022, homeowners have a lot of equity in their homes because home values have skyrocketed over the last two years. So if you were to lose your job or inflation continues to go up, you could potentially sell your home this year or next year because you're going to have a bunch of cash available. In 2008, that wasn't the case. People couldn't just sell their homes because they were underwater on their mortgages. That meant that what they actually owed on their mortgage was more than what they were going to get if they sold their house. That's not the case in 2022 for, I would say, most homeowners. But we're starting to see supply rise in the housing market and we're starting to see demand slow. This means that the housing market is slowing down too and the Federal Reserve's plan to lower inflation in the housing market is working thus far.
are. Some companies like Wells Fargo and Rocket Mortgages though may have overextended themselves over the last couple of years like a ton of businesses did. There was such a high demand for mortgages over the last couple of years that well these companies needed a lot more people in order to sell these mortgages. Now they're realizing that they're overstaffed and they're not bringing in enough pay so your mortgage companies are not giving out as many mortgages and they have to cut costs again that means people for these businesses that's probably something that we're going to continue to see because mortgage demand is in the basement no pun intended there's just not enough demand right now and banks and other financial institutions don't really like this they don't want to not give out mortgages because that's how they make money they don't want to have to raise interest rates because they're going to have a lot less buyers to every single home so that's not good for them and that's not good for our entire economy but what it does is slow inflation which is something completely separate from our economic picture and something that the federal reserve is focused on right now i will say that there is a slight similarity to what is happening today and what happened back in 2008 back in 2008 there was a lot of adjustable rate mortgages and the pitch was that you could essentially get in at a really low rate even if you didn't have any money or no job or bad credit you could get this mortgage and you could save a ton of money because the interest rate is very low sure it's going to go up in a few years but then you can just refinance for a fixed mortgage and you could potentially save a whole bunch of money that ultimately didn't happen though because as people went to refinance they didn't have enough equity in their home they were underwater and the amount that they were going to have to bring to the closing table for that refinance was way more than they had so they either stay in their home or they foreclosed in 2022 we are starting to see adjustable rate mortgages go up all throughout the country and for a very similar reason interest rates are rising for your fixed mortgages so people are turning to the adjustable mortgage thinking that they're going to save a whole bunch of money and they definitely will but you just don't know where the economy is headed next if interest rates go down in 5 10 or 15 years then yeah you might save money but by that entire terms end, interest rates might go back up and they might be way way higher you now are going to have to pay a much higher interest rate and you might not have the funds in order to do it that could be a problem in the future but what i will say is we're not seeing as many adjustable rate mortgages at this point so i don't think it's going to be a systematic problem like we saw back in 2008 but it's going to be something that we want to think about and consider in the future so what exactly is coming next for the housing market in 2022 and beyond well like i said before we're most likely not going to see an outright crash and a recession caused by the housing market in 2022 or in 2023. Back in 2007 and 2008, the housing market crashed and that caused a recession and a whole bunch of other problems because everything was linked. Like the housing market was linked to Wall Street and the housing market was linked to a lot of banks. Now that is still definitely true today. The housing market is connected to all of those different things, but the economic slowdown is causing a slowdown in the housing market. So we probably aren't going to see an outright crash. Like I said, though, we are going to see housing prices slow and the Federal Reserve hasn't been very specific about this, but they don't really know if the housing market is going to completely reverse, meaning that prices actually go into the negatives or if housing prices are just going to slow down, meaning that growth is only going to be around one to 5%, which is pretty normal versus the 20, 30, and even 40% that we've seen over the last couple of years. So the Fed hasn't really been too blatant about what they're actually looking for, but we know that the housing market is going to slow because of their actions. There is some FOMO in the housing market right now. Like you have buyers looking at interest rates thinking, I have to buy a house right now because if I don't, I'm never going to be able to afford one. There is some of that happening now. There's not as much as there was, say, in the first quarter of this year, but there's a lot more FOMO on the other side. Sellers are looking at their house and they're thinking, if I don't sell it right now, then I'm never going to get a really good deal for it again because housing prices are starting to flatline and interest rates are going up. So if I want out of my house, now is the time to do it. So there is some FOMO on the seller side. And look, if you want to sell your house in 2022, you definitely can do that, but you just need to make sure that you're financially prepared and that it makes sense for you to do that. Selling your house is a big commitment. And remember, you now have to re-enter the housing market or find another place to live if you decide to sell. So it's not as easy as just selling your house. You then 
and become a buyer or you have to completely downsize. And with the amount of equity that sellers have in their house, many of them just don't want to sell. And ultimately what the housing market dictates and what it comes down to is if we're going to see supply go up in the housing market and how low demand really goes. If supply somehow outpaces demand, then well, housing prices could end up going into the negatives, meaning a lot of the gains that we've seen over the last couple of years could start to pull back and we could see a complete flip. But if that doesn't happen, then you're still going to see housing prices go up in the United States. The people who are able to purchase homes are still going to purchase them. You're just going to have a little bit more demand than there are houses in the US. That is my personal prediction because builders are not building enough homes right now. It doesn't make financial sense for them to do that and contracts are being canceled left and right. So they're kind of pausing their building. That means that while well, supply can't go up much faster than it is right now, but people are not really willing to put their houses on the market. Some people are, and you're definitely going to see homes added to the inventory, but there's still going to be more people that want homes because there's still a lot of wealth that was created over the last couple of years. And that wealth is now being spent on homes for people to go out and buy new ones. And this slowdown is going to continue as long as the Federal Reserve is raising its interest rates. As long as those interest rates go way up, that means that more and more demand is going to get sucked out of the housing market completely. And there's going to naturally be more homes on the market. And like I said, we could eventually see that flip or we could be near an equilibrium. Either way though, it really just depends on the Federal Reserve. If the Federal Reserve lowers its benchmark interest rates like a lot of people believe it's going to, well, then that could mean the housing market explodes because everybody and their mother is going to go out and buy a home, especially those who have not bought over the last couple of years because interest rates are now going down and they have another shot. And obviously, if we don't see a lot of mass layoffs or unemployment in the US, right now unemployment is at a nearly 40 year low of 3.5%, well then that means people are employed and a lot of them have homes and they're just going to continue to pay their mortgages for the foreseeable future. But yeah, the housing market cooldown is definitely ramping up in the United States, but how cold it actually gets? Well, we'll just have to wait and see. But now I wanna hear from you on this issue. What do you think about the housing market essentially crashing in 2022? Do you think it's going to be anything like we saw in 2007 or in 2008? Or do you think that the housing market is actually pretty strong and we're not going to see a crash anytime soon? Whatever your thoughts are, leave a comment below before you go. But that is it for today's business and financial news breakdown. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to stay up to date with all the top business and financial news from around the country, our team puts together a free daily newsletter and you can subscribe to it by clicking the link in this corner right here. And if you want to stay up to date with me and everything else happening in the business and financial world, I'm putting out updates seven days a week over here on this channel and I've actually got another one ready for you right here. So be sure to check that out before you go. That is it for me, everybody. Be kind out there and I'll see you all in the next one.